We're back for the second half. Welcome back. Uh, so it's the morning after the night before. Um, it's one of the, you know when you get up in the morning and you walk outside and the first thing you can tell is it's going to rain today. There's just that there's that scent in the air, you know, like it, it's overcast, but you know it's always overcast in the empire. But it's just that you know you, you know it's coming. It's always uh, rainy in the empire. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and it does appear that um, all of the people that were in the in last night, so the noblewoman and her entourage, the academic, Philippe, the gambler, um, you know, the two of you, you're all um, planning to uh, head. You, you, you've all got tickets on this. Well, actually, in fact, Spoon doesn't have has a ticket on, have a ticket on this particular ca- carriage, but I'm going to assume that you sort that, that out pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, I basically, hey, my my friend, the priest, told me that it was uh, one shilling. No worries. Uh, as you are leaving the inn as well, you also do notice that you, you, you get a chance to pass that poster uh, that looks like this. So I'll give you a chance to read that and let, give the, let the or, would someone like to read it for the audience's sake? Spoon, go on. Uh, His Excellency, the Crown Prince uh, Hergard von Tassenink, Nink, of the Grand Principality of Ostland, hereby gives notice that he is currently resident in Altdorf and wishes to engage the services of a party of skilled adventurers. Employment is to begin as soon as possible for an indefinite period. Would-be applicants are forewarned that they shall be required to undertake a most perilous journey into the into unexplored regions of the Grey Mountains. The matter is of the utmost delicacy and absolute discretion is required. Remuneration is negotiable depending on the experience, but a minimum of eight crowns per person per day is guaranteed. In addition to a generous bonus on the completion of the mission, no laggards, cowers, or dwarfs need apply. Signed, personal scribe to Crown, Crown Prince Hergard. So a crown, by the way, is a gold coin. So like a so that, gold coin. Yeah, they're <laughs> offering us a fortune. <laughs> I don't know that we have the experience level that they're looking for. <laughs> I mean, they're putting posts up on like pubs in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, assume for a second that perhaps this guy has actually invested heavily in the carriage business. Would be a pretty good incentive to send people to Altdorf and then turn them away and they have to take the trip back. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I, I, I'm, looking, I'm looking for the greater picture here. I mean, this could just be nonsense. Yeah. Surely uh, okay. this is not for me, though. It's been here a while. This 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 poster, obviously, as well. It's not not not, not a new poster. I'm just worried how we're going to fit like ten people in a carriage. That, that's an excellent question. You stand around because the carriage seats six. Uh, <laughs> now there are. It's one of that. Like it does have like seats on the top, and, and like you can sort of hold onto the side as well. Um, but you know, everyone's like looking at the carriage, looking at the number of people, looking at the gray sky above. Um, now, um, Lady Azol and her entourage are already in the carriage, um, mm-hmm. and, and as you approach, um, the, her handmaid sort of like um, uh, points to you, Spoon, mm-hmm. and just just as you over, I will approach. Okay. Uh, Lady Azol has paid our carriage drivers extra to uh, keep the uh, interior of the carriage to her and her entourage, but. She has. She will allow you to sit in the carriage with her, so that we can have a, this conversation on the way to uh, outdoor. She is most gracious. You want to uh, try and intercede on your friend's behalf at all? Uh, yes, I would. I would. <laughs> I would, I would uh, uh, say, surely, um, my friend, uh, Luke, Luke Ger- the, Barrel Rider. Yes, the priest of Sigmar. Um, would be would be welcome in uh, your lady's presence. He's an excellent conversationalist, if you like. Ooh, nice. P- purity uh, of mind. Yeah. <laughs> ah, is he of the Earthwald Barrel Riders? Actually, yes. He hasn't mentioned it, but <laughs> yeah, he is noble. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as far as I know, yes. It's the only. It's the. It, that they surely must be related. He's the only person with the name Barrel Rider I've ever met. Well, then he he would be welcome as well. Excellent. It's mostly a title, but okay. 
<laughs> it's like you, 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 you catch like a fleeting glimpse of a look from Philippe. You know, who's sort of like, you know, come on, man, get me in here. But uh... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> shouldn't have tried to swindle me, Philippe. <laughs> um, so the two of you get on that now. <laughs> according to the module, the the carriage road should arrive two hours later, hungover. Uh, uh, but I think that given what happened, yes, hey, all right. nailed it. <laughs> We're gonna beat that uh, rain, guys. Yep. So um, yeah, everyone else is told to get on top of the wagon or hold onto the sides, and uh, it sets off. And, and no doubt, you, you've been gone about two minutes um, before the rain starts. So all right, so Luger, of course, the men will sit across from the women who have secured for themselves one side of the carriage. Ludger has crammed himself into as small a space as possible. And is trying not to look at any of these high-born noble women or the scary purity sealed woman who is definitely a much like he accounts himself to be a good priest because he reads and he follows the words but she has definitely served as a holy warrior in a way that he has not so he's trying not to make eye contact with any of them in the sure. way that a, so that, 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 a teenager right. does it's just the okay, handmaid. So that's the, yeah, it's the handmaid. Yeah, hundred percent. He would never make eye contact with her. <laughs> he's just fidgeting saying? awkwardly. It's not like anime. If he makes eye contact, his nose starts to bleed. Is that right? No, no, no. It's not that bad. Jeez. <laughs> Listen, I've had four terrible nosebleeds over the last two days. I'm just saying, vampires. Where are you at? I need you to help. Um, Present any accidents around here? Not very really COVID safe for those vampires. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, they're right, immune so. to it. They don't have blood. So, wait, can uh, vampires get viruses? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like that would be rough, given their profession of drinking blood. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um. So. Uh, Lady is old. Uh, this is uh, Lord Lord Einbecker, Lord Barrel Rider. I, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I give a very formal and noble nod, but I don't respond to the Lord part because, despite my mysterious unnamed parental back backstory, I do not consider myself to be a Lord. I am, however, noble boy. I don't say any of that out loud. It's all. In one Internal awkward monologue. nod. Yeah. Internal um, monologue? Jesus, uh, I don't even go, well, this is not that edgy, I just <laughs> up nod. Uh, it is a pleasure to meet you as well, Lady Isolde. Uh, Jenna here tells me that uh, you were hoping to speak with me? Uh, yes, I was going to offer you my services as a... Uh, extra sword, but it seems you have that area well in hand. And he like nods to uh, the the beefcake of, yes. of a woman <laughs> sitting next to her. Yes, yes uh, Maria is uh, has been in my service for some time and is, uh, has, has proven her worth on more than one occasion, both for myself and for my late father. Do you have uh, estates in Altdorf? Yes, it's fam family estates. I am uh, returning from my uh, father's funeral, in fact. And my condolences. He, he was going a long time. It was, uh, uh, it's a mercy that his passing finally came. Ooh, Lugger thinks that's real bad. That's against, that's against Sigmarite faith, right? Just a brief reading was like, you can always be better than tomorrow, like striving to live for every day, right? He doesn't say anything, but he turns to look at her for the first time disapprovingly. But he says, my condolences for your father's passing. May he arrive in Sigmar's halls. Intuition roll. That's something I, that's the one thing I'm actually good at. Uh, do you want from uh, from both of us? Or um, just, just, you can make uh, a spoon. Because you're you're going to be at minus ten though, spoon, because um, it's it, yeah, it's not really in your bag. Sure, it's more of a. Uh, 
Christmas. I absolutely party. don't. Yeah, I absolutely <laughs> don't. Don't. No, I notice nothing. Okay. I get so a glint in my eye. <laughs> there's, 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 a, there's, there's a sort of unspoken tension between you and her. Like, obviously, you're uncomfortable in her presence anyway. Um, and she's not so much uncomfortable in your presence, but maybe you, you get this sort of vague sense of dismissiveness about your role. Like, like she's, she's more um, impressed with you as a noble or like with your family than she is with your involvement with the church. Uh, and, and don't get me wrong, like, you know, there's... You know, certainly her 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 manson or her her, um, her her muscle, you know, wears purity seals. Like, there's no sort of, you know, and she probably has like you know also like a necklace. That, like, the same way that a person might wear a crucifix, you know. But there's there's something odd about her that you know that you're you're sure there's something just about her faith that is you're not sure on. <sighs> <clears throat> I so then, uh listen so, I don't know a lot about Warhammer fantasy right but in the Warhammer 40k universe it would be very normal for a priest to press someone on this point right like oh you don't like my faith you're you're questioning the imperial cult let's inspect that further perhaps violently so, so, so what I'll give you is this. So, so there, there is a, a phenomenon going on right now within um, uh, the Empire, known as the the Sig the the, uh, the Sigma Heresy. All right? So, so um, Sigma like Sigma was a person who ascended to godhood after um, I can't remember the actual. But anyway, it, 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 Ulrich it was, gave him the crown. Yeah, it, it was a, a moment of apotheosis. So, there is sort of this this group that have asked the question what if sigma wasn't actually a god what if you know what if it what if it behooves the church to have us believe that you know that that, that they, they can just create this extra deity um that we've all we've all got to worship now so it doesn't lead to like you know it, it's not not, not not sort of chaos cult it doesn't lead to you know heretical thing it's more just like a thought thing on what if what if yeah. Um, Sounds like yeah. something Nero would believe in at yeah. the beginning of season one. Yeah. However, um, and it's also it's like in the same way that like you know occultism was popular with nobles in the in the in the, in the, at the end of the nineteenth century. You know the Sigma Heresy has probably gotten its roots most into sort of like nobles that like to sit around and talk about how you know how different ways the world could be without any real sort of scope for how the world actually is. So it, it would be it would be not unquestioning to assume that this woman may have like you know questioned um these sort of tenets but by the same token you would also know there's no way no matter how much she pushed her you know that she would you know she you know, admit to response it to, yeah exactly right it would just oh yes of course sigma is is our is our lord is our lord and protector um all hail all hail sigma etc so. my lady have you ever heard of the utgar method <laughs> <laughs> um Please do tell me. It is a methodology by which one might cleanse their space and their mind and their soul by removing that which does not need to be there. I sense within you something that need be unspoken here. And perhaps it is better that rather than fill this carriage with words, we remain in silence to better preserve the purity of all of our relationships. What he's really saying is, I think you're a heretic, but I don't want to press you on it because I don't want to go outside. <laughs> so maybe we should all just shut the fuck up. <clears throat> all right, then. Um, yeah, look, I, I don't need a role for that. Um, okay. That's good, because I would lose. Paris. Uh yeah, you can happily have a have an an awkward, an awkward silent journey in in this carriage. Unless there's anything else you wanted to raise, Spoon? Um, no, I don't think so. But I I do think like Dirk just gives Luke the evil eye because now he's got like a boring ass carriage ride. <laughs> would you rather be wet? No, but I'm not the one who would was was pissing her off. I don't. I wouldn't say he pissed her off until that moment. Yeah. No. Like, 
Like, that's, you know. But let me ask you like, a question. Like, Do you think perhaps she pissed Ludgar off first? Maybe. Okay. I'm, 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 but she's the one who's in control of the carriage. Yeah, we're all still in the carriage. We are. Maybe, we are. perhaps, Dirk, we should count our blessings rather than miserly glance among our misfortunes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. This, this whole conversation happens for yeah. look. <laughs> yeah, by a significant PC glance. <laughs> I feel like it could just be leaned in towards each other and whispered together. And he's in, like, in, in, in Bretonian. Yeah, in Bretonian. Ah, Bretonian, yeah. there we go. <laughs> uh, no worries. All right. Um, so, look, the uh, the day, what is that? So, uh, what she does do, though, is she does share, or so she has Jenna share food with you as well when they when they break out their food. Excellent. Um, because you are, you are sort of guests in her carriage, so to speak, mm. even though you paid to be here. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, the, like the, the day seems to wear on it. Everyone outside is sodden from the rain. It's like it's not heavy, but it's just it just keeps going. And so, and there's no there's no respite. Um, the carriage itself is you know it's it's going faster than walking speed, but the with the rain you know it's turning the, the ground to mud. It's not not going at like sort of full speed. Um, and, and you know, at some point during the day, there's there's, there's warning that you probably won't reach. The, um, the inner seven spokes by tonight, but that they're confident that they can reach um, a, a smaller roadhouse, a uh, place called um, the Five Brothers Lodge um, by by that night. Um, so, and, and yeah, it's about dusk. You, you sort of do you join onto the main Middenheim to Outdorf Road. And you see a road sign which indicates that Outdorf is 120 miles away. Um, but you know, night falls um, before the coaches reach its destination. So um, they have got like, they've got lamps on the side of the the, um, uh, the coach, and you know the occasional lightning flash does um, you know provide some outside illumination. Um, but it, it's maybe half an hour past dark when suddenly the the coach drivers pull the coach up sharply. Um, and uh, the, you know, the, you hear some sort of like, you know, some people are bored. Like, I, I, I was saying, you know, what's what, what's wrong? And, and then you can also hear then the um, the coach driver sh shushing them down. Uh, I think Dirk loosens loosens his sword and it's scabbard because he knows okay. night nighttime in the forest is real real bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, the uh, the. Uh, one of the coach drivers, so Holtz, uh, Holtz um, climbs down to the side of the carriage. It's like it's got like the window you can sort of pull down in the carriage door, to, um, and he looks to both Maria and um, uh, you, Dirk. Mm -hmm. um, can you get your weapons ready? There's some problem on the road ahead. Uh, Dirk nods and looks looks to Maria. All right, so she 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 draws it like pulls the sword out as well and. Like mm -hmm. she, she goes to get out as well because obviously it's you know, need to do be out to be to be doing. Yeah, I will yeah. go to follow her. Ludgar will step out behind the two of them, drawing a dagger quietly and offering a silent prayer to Sigmar for steadfastness. In in the dark, down the road in the rain, you can see it like a, a human figure who seems to be crouched over some something like a, maybe maybe another personal animal on the road. Um, and, and you can hear these sort of sick sounds of um, chewing, uh, and and there's like a, a flash of lightning, and, and the figure sort of looks up and spins around, uh, looking in your direction. Uh, they look not unlike uh, this. some sort of beast man. Oh. Yeah. So that, that, that's, a, that's a person's arm in their mouth, and green ichor runs down from their um, from their eyes. Now, spoon, you actually recognise this person. This this uh, person who's eating this guy. Yeah, the person who's, who's doing who's doing the eating. Yes. Okay. Um, so he was in your regiment uh, in the military. Okay. Um, he was uh, like certainly lowborn. You know, one of those sort of people that like 
was given the choice of you know, go to prison or join the army sort of thing. Sure. Um, but that was you know, popular had, back in the day. Yes. Um, had, had been a friend of your for, friend of yours for a time. Um, his name his name was Rolf um, Rolf Hodesus. Oh. Um, he look you know he he got caught probably stealing supplies or something and ended up being sent to like the brig and subsequently escaped probably about four months ago. You never you never saw him again. But you know he was he was a good man. Um, just you know had had, had a bad upbringing and. You know, let his let his sort of last in his ways um, get on to him. But yeah, he he's currently crashed over the body. What appears to be not a noble, but like a a, a better dressed person um, who is who has been killed and partially dismembered and, and partially eaten by him. Um, and and all you can see is like hatred in his in his white cancerous eyes, which are oozing um, green pus that seems to almost glow in the moonlight. So, what uh, would, uh, so you're so this, you used to boast of this. What would you both like to do? I'm gonna wait for one of the other people cr- clasping of the sword to go in first, and then follow swiftly behind them, shouting, uh, uh, "Admonitions of Sigmar upon them." My holy yeah. symbol in one hand, my dagger in the other. I think it'd be perception rolls as well. <clears throat> we get ambushed. We're going in there. This guy, it's all just paint. You know, there's bandits waiting for us. They <coughs> they knew that we would zerg in on this guy. Uh, failure for me. Uh, but yeah, I think I think Dirk, uh, you know, draws his sword and is like, wait a second, Rolf? What, what the hell? Yeah, but so we'll AP, still... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so, so, AP, you notice that it looks like, like from the tracks in the mud, another carriage has come through here recently and you can sort of see where like nearby where people have sort of sprung out of the the, the bush on either side to attack the carriage and then the carriage and their footprints go further down the road but past where this guy is so this is a place where bandits would attack a carriage but instead we've got a nurgleite zombie dude in between us and where the ambush would be uh, well, it looks like an, an ambush may have happened, and, and it is it is run further down the road. Like the carriage just tried to get away and right. being chased, and maybe this guy fell off, and, and this one has stopped to eat him. All right, I'm gonna seeing that Dirk is confused. I'm gonna encourage Maria silently to go first, and then I'm gonna like pull up beside Dirk while he's pulling himself together and say, "We have to go for him now." Another carriage has been run off the road ahead. Look, there and there. And then I Naruto run forward with my, you know, with my dagger and holy symbol out. <laughs> hey, I'm a 16-year-old. Naruto running is cool, right? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Do they still watch Naruto nowadays? Is it cool? No. Um, right. but yeah, so... So, so Spoon, uh, what is your, what's your initiative score? Um, my initiative score... Uh, where do I see that on the it's sheet? A, it's, it's, it's a characteristic I next to toughness. Oh, I um twenty six. Yeah, what's yours, Arthur? Thirty five. Okay. I'm pretty sharp. Maria, Maria, Marie, sorry, she's forty five. Okay, so she goes first. So when God this damn. guy comes, <laughs> when this guy comes running at you, um, yeah, she, she she's like at at, at uh, Luca's suggestion, like um, she charges at him as well. So she is going to try and sword him to death. All right, she'll just finish this for us right here. You know, there's yeah. no way. One, one I mean, one Maria. sword, how hard could it be? So let's see if this actually works. So I'll just go. Just Old try. Murder Marie, that's what they call her in the carriage. Oh, yeah. In about 10 minutes. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's only a marginal <laughs> failure for her. It's pretty good. Wow. I don't want to okay. fuck with Marie. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so uh, Rolf then is going to try. Oh, so so all all melee attacks in this system are a um, are a, uh, a opposed roll. So I've actually I've actually got to roll his opposed skill as well. Gotcha. So he's got to try and like dodge or, or block. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So she already failed, so she didn't hit. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So so why it matters is that you have something called combat advantage, um, which okay. is sort of like. The, um, the ebb and flow of combat. So um, as, your, it, when, as your advantage stacks up, for every point of advantage you've got, you get plus 10 
on all your combat rolls and, and it stacks every every time you win a contested roll you get plus one advantage so effectively you get plus 10 next round plus 20 plus 30 eventually you come to the point where the combat's just going um your way entirely basically um now it goes until you fail a roll when you fail a roll your combat advantage drops back to zero um and in any round in which you don't gain any, any new combat advantage or you are outnumbered you're cut your it tries by one so it, it's all about trying to keep the advantage up um like say on the front foot is that so charging in itself gives one advantage so she got one advantage for charging rolf got one advantage for winning a defensive role okay now it's his turn so he's attacking her with advantage so he's, he's hitting his plus 10 to that with his dagger okay so he got uh Ooh. plus one and she now she has to he has to make an opposed role yeah the, the the defense yeah okay so she got better success so she she goes to two advantage now okay so now it's your go spoon all right uh dirk is also going to charge in yeah so on your weapons page just click on click on your weapon and you'll see there's a checkbox for charging got it yep all right Okay, so that would be a miss. He still needs to make his rolling, right? But uh... okay, so he stacks up an extra advantage because he was he defended properly. But he's st he's still only at one, or, no, or does that that bumps him up to two? Okay, that's right. Yeah, and, and but you've got one now because you charged. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So then it goes to AP. Your turn. I. Can, rather than charge, can I slip around behind this guy? I mean, he's got two guys in his face, right? Yeah, but it will be because it doesn't zoom. It'll be a whole action. Will be to maneuver. You won't be able to attack as well. That's fine. I just maneuver around behind him just so that okay. he's got nowhere to go. Cool. No worries. At the end of the round, his advantage drops by one because he is outnumbered. Okay. Okay. Then he goes back to the top. So now it's uh, Marie's turn to attack him. So it tries to whack him with a sword. Well, oh, Marie. Despite how amazing she is. Uh, but he, so he, although she didn't hit him, he, he got worse than her in the role, so therefore doesn't stack up the advantage. So then he got minus zero, she got, she got minus, he got minus three, she got minus one. Okay, well, I have so a question three. real quick. Yeah. I have a 35 initiative. Wouldn't I go before Spoon? Oh, you do? Sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Mistake. Okay. All right, well, but he's got 40 though, so okay. he, he will try to stab her again. He gets a minus two, she gets to defend, very good advantage. Which she does, so she's up to three advantage now. All right, and then now it's your go, Arthur. I'm um, uh, stab him in the back. All right, I'll give you plus 10 for your position as well. Sick. Uh... That's not good. All right. Um, all right. And it's not opposed because he's ripping it from behind, so it's fine. You, you, you don't get advantage. He doesn't get advantage. Uh, spoon. Okay. I will attempt to stab him and fail. Wow, this is a complete horribly. misfest. Yeah. Uh, we we wasted all of our good rolls. Tell we we're we're playing uh. Uh, Warhammer system. <laughs> yeah, no one's good yeah. at anything. <laughs> um, all right, so you didn't, you'll lose one advantage spoon because you. Um, so on your sheet, just drop your advantage by one. Okay. Because you, you didn't gain your advantage this round. He's right, plus one for being for beings. Um, uh, okay, so it goes back to her now. So she will try to whack him. Okay, that's better. Plus six. Uh, and he will try to defend. Okay, so all right, so she beat him, but she got sixteen damage to him, which is enough. She just she just like cuts his head off. <laughs> it's like no, actually no. I, I, no, wait a sec. I'll roll on the table to see what she does. Yeah, because it's yeah. a table. You don't get a free you don't get a free decapitation when when you got to roll for it. I feel like I'm running in with a dagger, 
And since she did a body shot, maybe I'm like running in and then the sword just at the... Whoa, 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 whoa. I slip in the mud a little bit. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. I just want to be the sidekick in this buddy cop comedy we've got going on here. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so... Um... All right, she, uh, the, the sword goes through his eye. Um, yeah, so he's killed regardless. But yeah, she stabs him through the eye. Uh, even though, oh, that's no, body shot. I'm going to say body shot. Body on body is... Um, uh, okay, she, she drives it down to his collarbone. Um, so it so, really does come shooting out the back in the, in the yeah. his face. Yeah, oh, well, more, more like, it's, it's like a downward strike. Oh, right? gotcha. So okay. like, yeah. Yeah, it comes out through his lower back and like sprays the bottom of... Um, Luger's uh, robe with his, right. with, his, with his Icarus blood. I'm going to indicate to Maria, like there and there, the signs that there were a carriage robbery up ahead and that we should move forward carefully. All right. But she, I will not go she, first. <laughs> yes. Let's, let's keep to the woods on either side. Um. Dirk, Dirk nods and is like, ah, give give me a moment. I'd like to look over both Rolf and the guy he was eating. Okay, no worries. Um, so Rolf, like, other than the dagger he's carrying, is pretty much has nothing on his person at all. Mm-hmm. Um, he is, um, there's definite signs of chaos mutation on him. Um, just like, you know, like n- not like, you know, where he's carved chaos signals into his body. It's more just like, He's, you know, his body has shown signs of mutation mm-hmm. um, and, and, and clear madness as well. Um, the man he was eating was obviously just not a, a person not unlike you. It's the sort of person who would have been riding in a carriage um, and has, has probably fallen off into the mud when the carriage has suddenly rapidly picked up speed. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's actually probably the fall broke his neck, mercifully. Gotcha. Can okay. you tell me that there are signs of mutation? Yes, 100%, 100%. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think it's fairly obvious. Uh, I mean, but the thing is, I'm not paying much attention to any of this. I'm getting ready for us to get robbed. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Dirk turned. Yeah, Dirk turns to Luger and uh, Marie and says, "These may not be bandits. It looks like this is some sort of. Uh, I mean, and he like kind of just gestures towards Rolf's face. I look down and I go. Chaos. I hold out my holy symbol as I say. They must be cleansed with flame. And then I go back to sneaking into the woods so I can yeah. follow Marie. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You you hear a uh, a, a bestial sound in the distance. Like someone, someone like someone like crying out in a in an almost animal like way. Okay, they'll never hear us coming. We're gonna sugar plum fairy this. You know, we're gonna be like, <laughs> we'll just do some pirouettes on the way in. We'll all pirouette at the same time. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, I don't have any holy fury to summon, but I really wish yeah. I did right now. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a shield of faith. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, look, under the cover of the the, the storm, and and um, you, you you move our head, and you can see um, a the carriage on its side. Uh, it seems to belong to the, the the Four Seasons carriage line, based on its its uh, symbols. Um, there are a number of mutants standing around, currently sort of going through the pockets of um, the body of people they've they've dragged out of the um, the carriage. Uh, there is a mutant that looks like uh, this. Uh, one that looks like this. Um, one that looks like this. Uh, one that looks like this. And then finally, the clear leader of them, who's standing by nearby with a crossbow looks like the thing version of 
Um, I was gonna say it looks like cool. a uh, shitty CGI of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, who, who played Thanos again? Sorry, um, uh, Josh Brolin. Yeah, Josh, Josh Brolin. Brolin. <laughs> yeah, Josh Brolin thing. Um, give me perception rolls as well, please. Ah. Oh. Okay. So, because nice. you, cause you're like sneaking through like the bushes at the edge of the road. So, first of all, none of, none of them have seen you. Um, they're completely oblivious to your presence. You notice that there's like a body in the bushes nearby where it looks like someone got out of the carriage and tried to run away and has like two crossbow bolts in their back. I'm going to silently indicate to marie that's her name right marie here yeah. marie that the two of us will deal with the leader since i'm you know like i'm, I'm pointing at the crossbow bolts and pointing at him i'm like yeah. big threat and then like she can tie up the others we'll join her once we finish taking out that guy okay <laughs> now well, this we'll, person we'll, that we're the over us, we'll take one you take, <laughs> yeah, the, other you take the other five <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> judging, judging from her, her performance in the last in the last little dust up we had, that's our only hope. Because there's no way uh, Dirk and Luker are are taking six people. I'm gonna quickly look over this guy to see if he has one of two things: weapons or uh, some way to make a source of flame. The body, you mean? Yes. Okay. You turn him over. He is. When I say the speed image, okay, so you know how you can look at someone and say that looks a lot like this person without it clearly being like a, you know, a, a unusual thing. Some people just look mm -hmm. very, very similar. This person is um, the splitting image of Dirk, just <laughs> more, just more nicely dressed. So he has, but Dirk, what do you have as a weapon? A dagger, sword? A uh, sword. <clears throat> well, James, I, I actually have well, a sword handed. He, he's, I mean, wait, he's facial features, you know, like he. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, like put put Dirk in this guy's clothes, or, yeah. or, or vice versa. They could pass for each other, but um, he's not 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 um no. Okay. Right. Oh. I just crouch Metal Gear Solid stealth towards the leader, so that I can get towards Crossbow Man and stab him in the back repeatedly. Okay. Well, um, I'm, uh, I'm hoping Marie is flanking or doing something very no tactical. Um, give me please uh, stealth at. Um... Plus 20. What about the rain covering us? Does that give me a little bit, a little bit more? Plus 20. Uh, yeah, I, was say, I think that's the plus 20. Uh, so are, are we both, are we, we're both sneaking up here? Uh, I will fortune that. I'm also, yep, I'm also <laughs> fortuning mine. Because that was fucking awful. The even chance. Okay, there we go. Nope, mine's so much worse. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so, so first up, they're alert, so you, you still get a surprise round. So you just haven't reached the guy by the time they spot you, but they, their initial reaction is shock that there's anybody else here. Mm -hmm. So you, you guys will still get a surprise round, but you're not, you just, I'm just thinking, not right next to the, not right next to the, the bad guy. Okay. okay. So uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to deal with you and him, and let we'll worry about Marie and them later. Okay, so um, I'll just see what his initiative is before. Not, not that it will matter because we get to go first this round, but for next round, he has an initiative of 35, which is. That I have that too. Arthur? Yeah. Okay, so PCs at take reference. So Arthur, you'll go first anyway. Charge. A charge. Okay, so make an attack. You also get another plus. So tick the charge box. And you also get plus 20 because you're surprised. It's going to be a lot more surprised when I trip and fall in front of him. <laughs> uh, it says advantage one. That can't be right. I want to remove that. Wait, modifier is 10 minus 10. What the heck? Uh, Should I have advantage one? Moderator is zero? Uh, you, 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 get a, you get an advantage for charging. But yeah, oh. it happens after you charge, I think. Well. Oh, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Remember when I rolled a one? Me. Wasn't that nice? Yeah. Yep, yeah, that was great. That was fantastic. Okay, it's you now, Spoon. Yep. Uh, also, also charging. Cool. 
Um, and then you said there was an additional plus 20? Yes. Uh, so, okay, so then that just changes that to a 30. Wow. Oh. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to spend my last point of fortune and re-roll this because okay, that's a 75. <laughs> like... Okay, there we go. No worries, okay. That will hit for nine damage. Okay. So, the rain makes the blade stick. Okay, <laughs> doesn't work as well, James. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you've hurt him badly, but he is uh, not being killed yet. And actually, so he's got some defense too. He's wearing some armor. So, I don't drop his wounds down. To actually, like a fly wound somewhere. All right, good to know he's taken four wounds. <laughs> All right, so I work this out. So now it goes to the new round of combat. So this is now you, Arthur. You're in, you're going first. <laughs> I'm gonna stab him. Okay. I don't have charge this time, right? No, you don't. Okay. Right, you, you will get your, your advantage. You have, if you have one advantage, still because you charge. What up. about? We outnumber him. Oh uh, no, that that just that just attrides his advantage each round. Very well. Nope. Stop uh, rolling nineties, okay. Arthur. Okay. He, Do you stop it. rolling nineties? It's a fence roll. That's true. Okay, but he doesn't get any advantage though. So okay, okay. Uh, then it goes to him. So uh, he says he's been hurt by Spoon, so he's going to try and hit Spoon back. Sure. So Spoon, you make you make a weapon roll. Yep. Oh, if you if you, as long as you get a success, you'll get one more advantage. Nope. <laughs> no, no success. Uh, no, no success, but uh, yeah. No okay, so uh, now, Spirit, it's your go. It's actually attack. Right. Here we go. Whoa, oh, boy, Spoon. Tell me again about rolling nineties. I was, I was a seven. Oh dude. shit! So, okay, so, so he, he picks, got an advantage. He picks an advantage. Okay, yeah. but that round ends, and you lose it for being outnumbered. Yeah, but you didn't gain this round, did you, Spoon? So you lose yours. Yeah, oh, there's yeah. the one that I had. Yeah. And AP, <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't gain this round, did you? I don't think so. No, you got paid your advantage. <laughs> what, what I'm imagining is it's just like this comedic fight between Dirk, Luker, and this guy while in like the background, Maria's just arms flying. Flying. <laughs> Just like slaughtering the other. And the, the other Doom time. soundtrack is playing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But when it's on us, it's like galloping. <laughs> I, I, I was gonna go with the the always sunny theme, and then it like, swaps back. Oh shit! Okay, AP. Yeah, I'm gonna attack him again. <clears throat> All right, so I'm, I'm at advantage zero now, correct? That's right. Yep. Yeah. All right. It's gonna make this so much harder. Yep. Oh my God. <laughs> it's zero ninety one. This is uh, this is. Uh, <laughs> Like the rolls, man. The okay. rolls. Iron Jesus hates us. Yeah. All right. I'm better <laughs> with a bow. Astounding failure. Impressive failure. Okay. Failure. Spoon. I'm trying to hit you. All right. Roll it. Uh, hey. Zero hit. advantage. Don't say that. I got an 82. Wow. 10, 10, to, 10 damage to the head. Ouch. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's rough. Um, okay, so you've got um, oh, you've got a scar over three, one eye now. Three toughness. Yeah. So uh, you oh, can right, take yeah. seven seven wounds. So it's yeah, it's not it's not uh, it's not as debilitating, but yeah. uh, it's still pretty debilitating. Can't take another one of those. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I will try and try and try and kill this guy. No worries. Ugh. I saw the 10, and then it rolled over. Okay, but he doesn't get advantage either. Okay, and then this round he loses his advantage because he's outnumbered. All right, and then, uh, so, AP. All right, James. Yep. Ludgar is frustrated. As we previously mentioned, he was Naruto running, which means he was holding his dagger point down. Yep. So in a moment in the rain, he whips back his white blonde hair and he flips the dagger so it's point up, but he does it where he lets go of it, and then he whoosh, tries to rear out and hit this guy in the stomach. You know, but it's all very movie sequential. 
It's a bit, bit of an all-out attack. No, and uh, never mind. <laughs> I do try to hit in the body, though. Like I said, yeah, but, but at, yeah. at yeah. least it was impressive. <laughs> It's so impressive he tries to hit you instead now. <laughs> yeah, so make, make, make a weapon roll. To Great. Defend it. Probably not. This is this is where the one comes in. There, there we is. go. There it is. There it is. Okay. All right. So yeah, you, you're equal to it. So you, you, knocked, you, you dodged the blow. You, 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 <clears> I feel like we blade lock for a moment. And you're like, and I get in his face. And I'm like holding the Sigmarite elm. So, so you get one advantage. For, uh, yes, six, 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 get wrecked. Spoon. All right, I will try and take advantage of uh, that and stab him while he's busy. Nope. Jesus. All right, this is the point where we get mobbed by three guys. Marie's dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, just, they just get behind us, so they're just like, hey, guys, how's yeah. it going? Yeah. <laughs> Snaps, okay, <so> huh? <laughs> Uh, I think at this point, like, Marie's killed two of them. <laughs> and so they, like, they start to run. Um, and so he see like, seeing that his, um, his uh, 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 allies are going, he's all starting, he's going to um, try to run as well. But when well, it's his turn. So um, it'll be uh, AP going first. Yep, I'm going to stab him. Okay. That's a cool phrase to say. I'll just be like, you will be cleansed of your impurities! Ah! Stab him in the stomach. Sigmar sends his regards. Sigmar did send his regards, bitch. Yeah, okay, no <laughs> right in the leg. You're not going anywhere. Oh, exact defense. Oh. Uh, you can spend it. Have you, got any, have you got any fortune points left? I don't. No, okay. All right. All right. So then he, start, he, he starts to run. Um, so he, he's... Do we get attack of well, opportunity? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll give you tax against him as he, as, he, as he goes to leave in the rain. He goes to leave undefended attacks. You're not going anywhere. Yeah, with rolls like that, who could who could stop him? Plus, okay. plus three success. Yeah, okay. He takes eight damage, minus his five, takes three damage. So he, uh, he, he gets away, but he gets away injured. Um, I mean, look, you can chase after, but he's running, running into the bushes. So. Yeah. If, if 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 Luger even starts to chase after Dirk. No, 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 no. Uh, I mean, look, it is the duty of a priest, of course, to cleanse all impurities, but I am but one man, right? I feel like Ludger yeah. would inform someone better yes. equipped than a dagger in the night in the rain. <laughs> I'm in place. I'm in yeah. place. Give me, give me perception rolls. All right. Now, is that Thunder the game, or was that... That's the game, yeah. Wait, it's giving me advantage on this roll. So did I set my advantage to zero? Oh, you, might, you might take your, yeah, pack your advantage to zero. All right. So it's over. All right. Okay. So you both, so you both notice that there is um, somebody is sneaking up on you from the uh, from the bushes near where you came from. Identify uh, yourself. Okay. I just say it loudly and okay. turn with my. Dirk okay. Rolls pointing a sword at wherever. Okay. A, 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 a voice with a it's halts. And Holt steps out into the into the moonlight, carrying a blunderbuss. Mutants, Holtz. Mutants along the way. You know, as like Dirk is like holding holding a hand to his to his head, like trying to staunch the blood flow. Going. Where? Oh, uh, he, 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 he looks at you. He's like, "Oh, I thought you were dead. I saw the body." Yes, it was. Uh, strangely familiar uh speak speaking of which i think dirk is gonna go look at that guy a little bit more all right okay. i'm i'm gonna tell holtz to keep a watch and then ask marie to help me gather up all the dead mutants so we can burn their bodies before we leave okay yeah That's it is it that. is like raining in the middle of the night yes but some things must be done Clean space is a clean soul, Spoon. 
clean space is a clean soul. Um, searching him, you find two things. First off, you find this note. <gasps> Lock, stock, and barrel. I feel like somebody's missing some barrels. <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay okay and the second item you find on him is an affidavit which looks like this perfect oh my god Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> I will pocket both of those. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah he's definitely dead. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's time for you to uh, assume his identity, of course. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, you know, I, I guess I'm, I guess I'm going to become the, uh, the baronet Liberung of Uber strike. It's interesting because traditionally Baronet is the baronial title that does not transfer through inheritance. I don't know if research they did back in 1987 when they wrote this. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right, I'll buy that. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, so I, yeah, I will, I will pocket both of those. Okay, no worries. Um, yeah, so Marie helps you part the bodies. Um, I mean, Do we have they, any they, they lamp just... oil somewhere, something that we could set them aflame? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's, there's certainly like on the in the carriage that's right here as well. Oh, I get liberal with it. I mean, yeah. I want to make sure they go up. Um, right. Are you are you just doing the mutants? Just the mutants. Just the mutants. I don't know what a sigmarate uh, burial regularly looks like, but this is just the mutant cleansing. Okay, no worries. Um, you hear a um, uh, like a trumpet sound. Um, like like a, almost like a bugle call, uh, and you hear you hear horses coming. It's it's the knights of Liberung. The knights of Liberung have come <laughs> for Uber Strike. Um, would I have any like any idea whether this air this road is like patrolled? Uh, you it, there would be road wardens that would um, patrol these roads. Okay. I'm going to lean into Marie and say quietly while putting a hand on her arm. You are an excellent fighter. I don't know what's going to happen next. But Sigmar bless you and thank you. You held, you held that mutant off well. I did not. I, I appreciate that, but it would be a lie. You, you, you were your friend. Yes, he, he truly struck deep blows with the sword. Um, so a group of men ride up on horses. Their leader looks like this. Uh, and like th they sort of have like their pikes down like not directly at you but sort of like ready to use if necessary because they, they they see the overturned um carriage they see the burning bodies um hold there what's what's going on here what's going on here must have been the wind <laughs> <laughs> i hold uh, up my uh sigmarite amulet and say we were attacked by mutants. They had ambushed this carriage ahead of ours. Eaters of flesh, wolfmen, and others. I gesture to the burning pyre, and as I do, there's like a weird glint in my eyes of like glee. Uh, they, they, the survivors fled off into the woods. Uh, he, he like which which direction? I point to the obvious tracks. All right. Yeah, cool. he's, he, he <clears> sends <throat> like two of them on horses to go to go after them. Who are you? I'm uh, Magnus uh, Pilaster. I'm a road warden in these parts. Who were you? Are you been traveling? At, you were part of this caravan, part of this coach. And uh, the one? Like, no, no. I'm from. I'm from. Uh, he explained. Where he's from. And. You men are? Passengers. 
Yes, on our way to Altdorf. And you, ma'am, you, in Marie, if you're Marie Schultz, lady servant to lady is old. Um, the, there is like a brief montage of police procedure where they like, you know, they, they make notes. Yeah, but it's middle ages police procedure so <laughs> you know <laughs> it's almost as much, good as today's actually you know yeah. <laughs> pretty much that they, they can script anybody strong enough to help move the carriage off the road until they can come back in the morning you know to probably move it um and uh then you know once they once they're content that you are not bandits and that you're not you know haven't done the wrong thing you know they they, they send you on on your way I do not ride in the carriage on the way back. No, it's not because I'm and not sorry. I don't in the carriage. I'll ride above, simply because I'm covered in blood from Marie and from the <laughs> body dragging. You know, it would not be appropriate for me to be with the. Uh... One of one of the um uh the wardens that you know in the in upper head there there is a um uh, a surgeon staying who should be able to tend to your wounds. Thanks, Sigmar. Because uh, I got I heard real that. fucked up. Uh, Dirk is riding in the carriage, or in the carriage, like with a like a. You That's because you're shift. used to blood and violence, yeah. Yeah, and one, well, and also, yeah, makeshift uh, bandage across his across his head where he got clocked. Yeah. So now that he's in the dark, rainy wind on the top of the carriage, Dirk, <laughs> yeah, Ludger is monologuing to himself like. What is the state so close to Altdorf that we are dragged into such mutant heresies and that nobles would openly flaunt the word of Sigmar? And, you know, he just does like a 10 minute anime monologue to himself about, you know, purity and righteousness. And I must stay the path, the Ludger method. <laughs> he commits himself to doubling down, learning lessons from this experience. All right, and I think I can just do this and go, duh, 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 duh. and in chat you should see a bunch of things. We just say, yeah. receive, 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 receive. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, and that is chapter one of ten of book one of, of ten of book one <laughs> of five of the enemy within. Game what one. the fuck? That's <laughs> long ass. I thought this was like an introductory module. <laughs> What the fuck, James? I didn't get any of that experience, by the way. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't. Um, so That's 30, 40, 45, which brings us up to 90 total. 90 total, okay. So, how important is leveling up to the next level of, like, priesthood, right? So Should I be trying to bull rush? leveling out the last of my stats because my skills are also already leveled out or should i be looking at talents and stuff yeah so um if there's talents you want so, so once you leave a career you can't buy the things from that career anymore so if, if there's a talent you want in this career when you change careers you can't go back and get it you can actually go you can take this career again to get access to it as such. I don't want to be initiated but, a second time. Yeah, exactly right. And, and by, by going up through, so what, what going up three careers does for you is it increases your social class. Um, so you go from like a brass to a silver to a gold, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, it, gives you, it gives you more things you can put up with your experience points. Um, gives you more talent skills, etc. So yeah, it's, the idea is not necessarily to bull rush or trying to get out of the career, unless the career is not doing anything for you. You're not getting the stats that you want, you know, from the career, for example. So right now, I think in your case, AP, um, you know, you can only put up from your mains from you know, toughness, agility, willpower. Whereas if you click on, um, and if we click, go to initiative and click on priest, you'll see it shows you when you go to priest, you can then put up fellowship. When you go to high priest, you can put up intelligence. When you go to lector, you can put up initiative. And you can see what it does to your social standings as well. All right, James, you ready for me to, to... let me just do it. <clears throat> I'm going in. Yeah, okay. Well, James, it seems like we might play this a few more times. I don't know what those talents that I have access to do. Blessings, holy vision. If I wanted to learn more about them, is there someplace online that I could get the Warhammer Fantasy RPG rulebook for purchase? 
Drive through RPG or cubicle7.co.uk? Drive through RPG. I heard that my second favorite broadcaster, AP Gaming Real, has a drive through RPG affiliate link on twitch.tv slash AP Gaming Real that you can click on. Maybe I'll do that when I go to pick up my Warhammer Fantasy RPG from Drive Through RPG. Thank you very much, J James, for assisting me in my self-promotion. Yep, I imagine, I imagine there'd be a link to that actual book with your affiliate link in the YouTube description below, right? That's too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> well, then maybe in the YouTube comments below, and I'll go put it in later on. All right, that's <laughs> fine. <clears throat> I don't, I don't know if you can do that with my affiliate code. Like, you I don't know. You can, oh. you can put the affiliate link into a link to a direct product. My God. All right. I do that. <sighs> All right, James, you got me. <laughs> Drive through RPG Warhammer Fantasy. All right, so what do you got? Uh, this is a lot of fun. I uh, I enjoyed it. Um, I like I like the system. I like the and foundry foundry is great. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm excited excited to get back to this whenever we get a chance. It, it, it's always been a very low powered game system. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you, like you, you really do start off as, as peon yeah. level characters. Well, and I mean, it it didn't it didn't help that we literally rolled like nothing below a seventy for yeah. for <laughs> every round of combat. Like, uh. Uh, am I looking for a fourth edition? Uh, for uh, it's whatever. So it's on it's uh, on Cubicle Seven's page. It's the only one of fantasy role play on Cubicle Seven. So yeah, it was fourth uh, edition. Yep. Yep. Definitely not third edition. Third edition. Third edition is cancer. Let's put it right up there. Wow. Third edition. There you go. Third edition is cancer. That's <laughs> those are strong words, my friend. That that that. So that was one of the very first uh, RPGs that FFG put out. So they at first they had uh, whatever their their weird one was called, and they had Fireborn, and they did fantasy role play when they that was when they very first got the games workshop license yeah and it was very much a board game disguised as an rpg i see um like you had cards for your abilities and once it was the first thing with special dice and um so so because i'll say while we're having a quick conversation about systems because the other one i looked at because today was legend of the five rings one of the games i put forward that i have and is, is in foundry and um, Legend of the Five Rings now has moved over to Edge Studios um, from FFG. And that also has an amazingly impressive uh, Foundry module. But I wasn't going to use the Edge one because no one likes the Edge Legend of the Five Rings. I was going to use Fourth Edition, which is the one that everyone likes, which had a, has a homemade Foundry module, not, a, not as strong. But that's one of those games that uses um, special dice. And I still feel that, that Star Wars is the only game that's done special dice right because they did special dice in the original Wifra, um third edition they did special dice in um legend of the five rings and the biggest problem with it is is that in both of those systems you have dice that give you both good and bad results so whereas in star wars you have dice that give you good results and dice that give you bad results so it makes sense to say i want to add one more dice this color that's good or i want to get rid of whereas you with both with third and Legend of Five Rings, you're going, well, if I add this dice, it could be good or it could be bad. Mm -hmm. Do I want to do that? You know, which is, I think, look, some people might like that sort of stuff. I don't know. True. Some people like weird shit. Yeah. And also, Legend of Five Rings, fourth edition, fifth edition, whatever it is, also steals character agency. There are things that can happen to your character, which mean that you, you are forced to take actions that the player might not want to take. Yeah. Well, some people are into that. Pendragon players, more or less. Yeah. But like I, I, so I ran a a short uh, game in the Legend of the Five Rings system when it came out, um, and I, 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 I enjoyed it. Um, but I feel like it, um, it takes it takes a a, a group that are that they're that they're all interested in the the setting and like the 
like the social aspect of the setting because obviously it's um you know that's a very a very large part of that yeah i i unmasking can can make or break i mean the thing like i i get you can have like friends and mechanics where a character loses their shit and attacks somebody that's a lot of role-playing games but in, mm-hmm. you can have something here where you, because you made a role your character suddenly turns to their lord and master and, and abuses the shit out of them um and and completely destroys their social standing um because that's what the the dice say yeah yeah and 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 so it's a it's a it's a delicate balance of like you know how far do like or how like how punishing do you make the unmaskings yeah like that's a so that that was kind of my takeaway from that it's like you know your 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 players have to be um cognizant of of that of that fact like you know and and they have to be on board with it yeah well james let me ask how did you enjoy the adventures of duke and Lu- dirk and ludger the worst dice <laughs> this this far east of the mississippi yeah um, sure. yeah um <laughs> if i had more time to repair what 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 i would have loved to have would be a, a battle map you know like like um only because we didn't it need it more, we were just yeah. stood still and missed know, constantly but, but, but <laughs> it, it, adds, it adds more when you've got that otherwise it is just we stand still and hit each other until one person dies i don't know though i i mean i evoked going behind the person right but i don't know that you need to flop around in combat moving around we really were just people in the mud trying to desperately stab each other at close range. Yeah. i mean yeah. it's the first time i've used the advantage mechanic that that's new to this edition of the game for example um which it I sucks think, you know, can, to not have right. it it sucks well, to not have it <laughs> yeah like it i i so i i mean the, the, you know that's I, I actually really like the advantage mechanic because yeah it does suck to not have it but like yeah and, and, and it, it can quickly run away you, you can mm-hmm. get to the point where you, you have to tell yourself look we need to turn and run now because our opponent has six advantage yeah he's, he's gonna yeah. smack us every time yeah and we're not gonna we're not gonna get ahead on them we need, we need to withdraw and rethink this But um, yeah, no, I, I I enjoyed it, and I, I I I think it was I feel it was twenty two euros well spent. So I agree. Um, to get this stuff, and uh, I, I uh, it's funny I, I wasn't originally going to buy this game, and then a friend of mine who um, uh, worked for the importer, um, they they got a couple of the collector's edition games in, and he's like, um, do you do you want one? I said, you know what, sure, I'll grab one. And then actually, Cubicle Seven very nicely sent me a free copy. Um, once I started doing stuff with them to do with uh, Wrath and Glory. Um, and Cubicle 7 continues to send me a, a, a copy, like a, a printed copy of each new book they publish for Warhammer settings. Oh, um, fantastic. So, you know, I so, <laughs> I, I gotta thank them there, but like this is like, this is something I, I wanted to give a try. And the Enemy Within campaign, I, I played most of it. I've never run it before, but I've played most of it. And it is such a clever campaign, like the amount of stuff that goes on... Um, across the five uh, bo- what, what, what were basically box sets um, was is su- such in-depth writing um, that, you know, it, it, yeah. it, it, I know it sounds cliche, but they don't make modules like that these days, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't, were, were you there when I, spoke, when I spoke about the grognag mechanic in the game? Yep. yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So to, to, swap, <laughs> to swap stuff around. Yeah, so that you throw 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 long time players off. Yeah. So who who put out the enemy within? Was that um, like what what company produced that module? Oh, I try to remember if it was because so originally Games Workshop themselves were doing Wifra, the first edition, uh-huh. and then they gave it a company called Hogshead Publishing, and I couldn't tell you whether Enemy Within came out before it went to Hogshead or after. Probably Google search would tell you that. Yeah, but there's, there's, a, there's a few other very popular, like Death on the Reich is another popular module for it as well. Um, so uh, the, there are a couple of things about um, that they're quite clear that there's some things that you can get in character creation now that can break this setting. Like if, if you get a, like, like having a horse um, uh, can make it so some things are you can just skip over some parts that are, that are quite important. So it'll tell you like you know. Hey, if you're, one of your players has made a horse and tell them, sorry, your horse is dead. Let's think of a reason how. Make it part of your backstory because we need, we need you not to have a horse at this mm-hmm. point in the game. <laughs> so, so it looks like uh, it was originally published by 
get the game games workshop and then uh the shadows over bogenhafen was from hogshead publishing in 95 that was the re first reissuing yeah, of okay. the enemy within yeah. all right guys I hate to cut in here but uh it's been a while since i've had to stream yeah. And my sleep schedule has become absolutely normal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting up at eight o'clock in the morning. All right. Yeah. So I, I'm I, I, I have evidence that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. I woke up at five one morning and messaged you. But I went back to sleep immediately after that. That's right. And you messaged me so that I didn't abuse you about getting up so early in the morning. Yeah. Or being up so, being up so early in the morning. Yeah. I, I had slept from midnight to that point, and then I just went back to sleep, James. I was thinking, like, defensive much? <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget the moment where you came in and blasted me and Spoon with dad mode when we were yeah. playing in Eco. <laughs> what, are you, what are you guys still doing today? <laughs> I went to work. I got paid. <laughs> so my energy levels search dropping rapidly for that. Oh, that's good. Thank, thank you for giving us a chance. To, I'm glad. I'm glad that despite being at the cold place down, we can still do something today, and I hope the audience enjoyed it too. Um, and it's it's always there. We have so. to do it next week. We're gonna have to come up with a really competent character for Pondo. Yeah. <laughs> to yeah. join us at the, at the waypoint. Yeah. Or, or that, or Pondo just rolls like one of the really really off the wall useless characters. You know? Yeah. <laughs> no, he's already done that. <laughs> Okay. Any closing thoughts? And James, why are you thanking me? We should be thanking you. You're the one that prepared this for us. Thank you, James, yeah. for you, you, making this for us. You you are the vehicle through which this which Oh my goes. god. I'm the tunnel, not the vehicle. <laughs> I'm the a service a road you the, travel yeah, on. <laughs> a is the is the road that our that our carriage hurdles along in the dark. Where we get like murdered in the course. night by mutants? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who are the mutants in this analogy? <laughs> I guess the audience. I don't know. <laughs> oh, God, that's too right. <laughs> oh, all right. We'll be back next week. I don't know what we'll be doing, but some of us will be here at least. Yeah, it'll either be more, uh, more this or... Could be. Traitor. Well, it'll be something, friends. Have a good time zone.